be a Champions League knockout stage. It's on. It's on Tuesday night at Old Trafford. And it's a massive game for Manchester United. Really great result against Liverpool. But whilst Liverpool fans search for Salah, Manchester United move on. We move on. We've beaten Liverpool. We forget about that and we move on to this game against Sevilla. Because I tell you what, if we don't win, if we don't win and we don't make it through against Sevilla then Liverpool fans will quite rightly tomorrow night be giving us a lot of stick and a lot of banter and it won't mean anything what we did against Liverpool at the weekend. So this is big time football. You move to the next challenge and it's severe tomorrow night at Old Trafford or tonight if you're watching on a Tuesday. Big news around Manchester United. We do welcome Anthony Martial back. He was back in training with Manchester United today, but Paul Pogba didn't train. It looks like Paul Pogba will miss the Sevilla game. Reports today in the sun, so take it with a pinch of salt, that Scott McTominay was the person who injured him in training on Friday, gave him with a big gash on the leg. So Pogba doesn't look like he will be playing. Is that a big thing? Look, as I said last night, Paul Pogba before Manchester United, very, very important player. We cannot be in a situation where we're saying we don't need Pogba. But having said that, we didn't need him against Pogba, against uh, Liverpool at the weekend. Maybe maybe we will be all right. We'll get into that starting lineup, all your thoughts, the way this game could go in a minute. But we like to do this on the United Stand. We like to bring in some social uh, media uh, especially from Twitter, uh, from opposition fans, and have a have, have a bit of uh, uh, topical stuff. And, and this is from Pablo Garcia, who's a Sevilla fan. Now, fortunately, I'm very good at Spanish, so I'm going to read this out to you in Spanish, and then I'll, I'll give you the interpretation. He says, "Why semana eliminas at United? Uf que cosquelo de partido grande que ganzasas diversos segur hacienda historia." Vamos mi Sevilla, vamos campeón. What he's basically saying there is, we've got no chance against Manchester United, have we? They've got a bigger history than Liverpool. They are, um, what was the next bit? Um, they're, they're a much bigger club than everybody else, including Liverpool. Bye-bye uh, Sevilla, bye-bye Champions League. That's basically what that says. So, obviously a very intelligent Sevilla fan there, that uh, he's fully aware that um, we're going to beat them tomorrow and that we're a bigger club than Liverpool. It's amazing, isn't it? It's spread around the world. But, um, we, we look, this this game tomorrow, what, what I fear about... Let's, let's do the lineup and then I'll tell you what I fear. Uh, what I fear is the away goal, which we can talk about in a moment. But uh, Manchester United can win this 2-0, says Shanu Sooth. Uh, did you say good Spanish, Oasis Times? That I think you'll find I'm better than Google Translate. Goldbridge Translate, that's all you need when it comes to Spanish. And um, Zlatan has to play some games at least, says Keshaf. I don't think Zlatan will be involved tomorrow. Uh, that is not what he is saying, says Andre Gutierrez. Oh, well, well, I challenge you to that. If you want to try and uh, give us a proper interpretation, then please do. Uh, remember, everyone, smash a like on the video. It is the preview. It is a one o'clock show. We have started doing these a little bit more recently. So if you do like the 1 p.m. shows, do drop us a like and just drop us a like anyway. But let's let's move to the lineup because I think this is going to be really interesting today for this game. Uh, no, it's not today. Uh, it's tomorrow night, isn't it? Um, we've got to win this game. Look, Liverpool was great, but Liverpool was self-contained. Liverpool was about rivalry and beating the Scousers, who'd just been so arrogant all week, got put back in their box, sent back to Liverpool till we meet again. I think if we get through Sevilla, we will meet Liverpool in the Champions League quarterfinals. I've just got a funny feeling that all the gloating we're doing now it's not over this season. I've got a funny feeling we will be playing Liverpool again. But we've got to get through Sevilla. How do we do that? Well, this is uh, this is the team I'm uh, going to go... Uh, well, obviously, there's no way it's not going to be David De Gea in goal. I think we, we wouldn't have any problems with that. Valencia. Let's not forget, though. I want to just say at this point, let's not forget that this is only um, two days... Two days after... Sorry, three days after the Liverpool game. So... Um, it, it, it is important in relation to, um, you know, fitness and, and quick turnaround of game. And I, I think that will come into something in a moment. Um, will Jamie Carragher be on Monday Night Football? I did a video on that's football at lunchtime. If you want to go and join that debate there and have your say on it. Um, untenable, some people think. Um, anyway, moving to the centre-backs. There can only be one. Uh, well, there, there has to be two, actually. Eric Bay makes it in for me, and I would stay with Smalling. Um, why change something that works really well? I've seen people putting Lindelof in there. I think it's ludicrous to play Lindelof because they played so well at the weekend, and I think the one thing that really stands out to me, and I don't know what you lot think, is we are in this situation at Manchester United where we keep changing our, our team week in, week out, and I think centre-backs need 
sustain sustainability and consistency and Smalling and Bay were flawless against Liverpool against a very good attack I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to everyone and say that for my Firmino Mane and Saleh, Salah Salah are, are rubbish they were at the weekend because we made them rubbish but they're not and we silenced them and and Smalling and Bay were a big part of that I would play those now I'm, this is what I predict Mourinho is going to do, by the way. I, I will agree. I will say what I think, and you can say what you think. I think Luke Shaw will play. Because Ashley Young was with... Uh, we haven't got anyone who can play in Valencia's position, so Valencia will play. But Ashley Young, fitness, he had a hard game against Liverpool. He had a good game. Do we want him playing in a game like this? He didn't play particularly well in Sevilla. I think Luke Shaw should come in. He still might go with Young, but I think Shaw's going to play in this one. I've got a funny feeling Luke Shaw will play. Um, so keep your uh, keep your thoughts on that. Obviously, Matic plays. Um, I'm going to go... Well, you'll see what formation I'm going to go with. Matic will play. Now, Pogba doesn't look like Pogba's going to be fit. Um, McTominay would be, obviously, the one you would expect to come in there. I think this guy's going to play. I'm very convinced that Mourinho is going to play uh, Fellaini. Um... Whether you agree with that or not, I don't know. But the reality is, he, he, he was he spoke very positive about Fellaini again after the game at the weekend. Um, he is desperate for Fellaini to sign a new contract. The way he's going to get him to do that is by giving him minutes. He will not get Fellaini to sign a new contract by putting him on the bench when Pogba's out and McTominay's out. Um, I think Fellaini will play, and I think Fellaini will play next to Matic. Mourinho wants him to stay at Manchester United. For him to do that, he's got to play him in the big games. And I think Fellaini will play. I don't think McTominay will start. I disagree. I would play McTominay because I like the fact that McTominay's quicker and he's got a good passing range. But I think he'll go with Fellaini and Matic as the midfield too. The only retainer I would say on that, if Fellaini is fit enough. Remember, he only came on for about 20 minutes at the weekend. Um, it's only two and a half days later. So that could be... A saviour for McTominay but I think if Fellaini as he was training today remember as I said at the start Pogba didn't train today Martial did train today Fellaini was training I think Fellaini will start and I think that's what Mourinho will go with um, moving on to the rest of the team it's it's not rocket science for me um, where is Juan Mata Mata's got to start it, it, it's Spanish opposition he has been the glue at the moment in the team. He, you know, he wears eight for a reason because he gives eight out of ten performances virtually every game. Mr. Consistent. He is helping out Alexis Sanchez a lot. They work really, really well together. Sanchez has got to go central. Never play Sanchez on the left wing again as far as I'm concerned. We've got Rashford and Martial for that position. Let those two fight it out. Keep this guy central. And he works really well with Mata. Mata's got to play. It's Spanish opposition. He's very consistent. It's a continental opposition as well. And matters just like the glue between the midfield and the attack at the moment, playing really, really well. Lukaku obviously will start up front, which leaves the left-sided position wide open. It's got to be Rashford. It's got to be Rashford. You know, I'm. You know, I love Martial. Martial FC, the Martial stand, whatever you want to call it. Martial's a better player than Rashford. But when Marcus Rashford does what he did at the weekend, that's when the Rashford Martial debate that we were having last season comes from. Rashford's not been playing well for a few months, but at the weekend he was back to his best. Rashford has to start. He's the man in form. Martial's been out injured. Martial on the bench, I ain't got a problem with that. Because I'll tell you what will happen if he starts playing Rashford on the wing. When he brings Martial on, we'll see what happened at the start of the season. They'll feed off each other and they'll just pump each other's game up. So that's how I think he will start against um, against Sevilla. I don't think... Uh, I think Martial will be on the bench. I've got no problem with that. And as I said, I think he'll play Fellaini. I don't think he'll play McTominay. As long as Fellaini's fit... He will play Fellaini. Uh, Martial to come on in the 70th minute versus Sevilla, says Ricardo Fidelgo. Um, Andrew Kay, I'd put McTominay in for Fellaini. At least he can pass a ball. Coming off a solid match as well. We need passing ability against technical Spanish sides. Andrew, if he picks McTominay over Fellaini, I'll give it a whoop whoop. I will, because that's what we want to see. McTominay's winning everybody over at the moment. I mean, he, but, but the one thing is, and I said this even two weeks ago when there was doubts about McTominay, because it's a very changeable opinion with McTominay because he's so young and there will be steps backwards and there will be big leaps forward like we saw against Liverpool but one thing about him is he does pass he passes forward and he's quick and Fellaini doesn't do that so I want McTominay to start anyway but also I, th I think it's, it's over the next few games it's very significant what happens with McTominay and Fellaini because if McTominay ends up going to the bench for Fellaini I think that's going to irritate a lot of people because Fellaini McTominay has got better attributes and he's from the youth Fellaini we're begging him to stay a, sign a new contract he hasn't got those attacking attributes that McTominay's got 
and he's into his 30s and we're begging him and he's a contract rebel. So I hope it is McTominay and not Fellaini tomorrow, but I think he'll go Fellaini because I think, as I said, he's openly, publicly desperate for Fellaini to stay. And if you are Marin Fellaini, one, you want the wages. Two, I want to play regularly. And, 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 and Mourinho is, knows he's got to do that. So that's how I think Mourinho will go. Luke Shaw could be Ashley Young, but I think Young, it, nearly 33 now, we need fresh legs. Maybe he's kept Shaw back for this. Um, but that's how we, he'll go. And I wouldn't disagree with a lot of that team. I don't know about you lot. I certainly wouldn't be playing, changing the matter. Sanchez, Rashford three. I think they're the important thing. For, you know, whoever plays in that midfield too, I think play... Play against Sevilla the way we played against Manchester uh, Liverpool in the first half. Uh, shield the back four with the two midfielders and let the front four express themselves. Pogba, a lot of people on about Pogba. Pogba didn't train today. Pogba didn't train today. Anthony Martial trained today. Anthony Martial should be back at least on the bench tomorrow. Paul Pogba didn't train today. I don't think Pogba will be back tomorrow. If Pogba's fit, then you just take Fellaini out and you pay Pogba and Matic in a game like this. And I think nobody, would anybody agree with that? I mean, I'll ask you lot. I'll let, let's let's just move so we can get the live comments up. Um, it hurts us not having Pogba, says Andrew M. It certainly does. But would if Pogba's fit, would you play Pogba? And where would you play him? Who drops out? Would Because would if he, play, if he plays Pogba more attacking, Sanchez will move to the left and Rashford misses out. I don't want to change that front four of Rashford... Sanchez, Lukaku and Mata. So it's got to be a midfield two to play that four. Do you play Matic and Pogba or do you play Matic and McTominay or do you play Matic and Fellaini? Matic is obviously going to play. Uh, Fellaini will play against Brighton, not Sevilla. It's a bloody risk, says John Sherrell. Well, I think that's that's probably the more um, in, uh, sensible option, um, for sure, um, definitely. Uh, George Kyle, Fraz, I've got the club doctor on speed dial, let me find out. Uh, Pogba is not good in a, mi in a midfield too, says Kashik. Well, that's why I'm saying, would you play him? Uh, I'd rather McTominay than a breathing social media account and hairdo. <laughs> uh, I would play Pogba over Fellaini, says HNK Music. I would definitely still play Pogba, says Jay Colthurst. Rashford should play, says Art Optic. Uh, I'm scared Pogba going in the summer, says Cameron Collins. Oh, don't worry about that, he's just injured. Pogba's just injured at the moment. Uh, please do smash a like on the video, folks. Let's see if we can get up to 500 while we're live. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Sevilla and the, the, the actual game itself. We've done the, we've done the, we've done the uh, preview there uh, of how we think we'll line up. And if anyone's just joined us, this is how we think we're going to line up. De Gea, Valencia, Bay, Smalling, Shaw, Matic, Fellaini, Mata, Sanchez, Rashford, Lukaku. This is what I predict Mourinho will do. Um, if it was my team, McTominay comes in for Fellaini, definitely. Um, and if Pogba's fit, he comes in for both of them and plays where Fellaini is. But apart from that, I'd be very happy with that starting eleven. I wouldn't change it. So, this game tomorrow, we've got to remember the Sevilla game in Sevilla, funnily enough. And it, what, if it wasn't for De Gea, we, we could be facing this game 2, maybe 2-0. Two, two well, that would have been fair, I think, without De Gea. What's going to change? Well, Sevilla's results in La Liga have not been very good before and after. So... If we can beat a team like Liverpool, I think Liverpool can beat a team like Sevilla. So we should beat Sevilla tomorrow. The reality is, if Manchester United win the game tomorrow, we don't need to worry about away goals. And the, the reality with Sevilla is, and we saw it in that first leg, they're a decent side, but they are toothless up front. You know, they really are. De Gea made a couple of good saves, but they also wasted opportunities in the final third. They pretty much dominated the midfield. They just didn't create any, they couldn't take their chances. At Old Trafford, we will, obviously, because of the crowd, because of the atmosphere, because of the, the home advantage, we are going to impose ourselves on them. And I see us scoring goals. Sevilla so struggle to score goals. So I, we win the game, we go through. And I think I'm going to go 2-1. I think it'll be 2-1 like it was at the weekend. I don't think it's going to be totally comfortable. I'd love it to be 3 or 4-0 and we just cruise through. But when is it ever like that with United? And, and the away goals thing is always something that's going to be in the back of our minds. Let's not forget, if we concede a goal, we've got to score two uh, or we're out. Draw at 90 minutes and we're out, unless it's nil-nil. So we've got to be very, very aware of the away goal. This is where, I was thinking about this this morning, and I don't know what you lot think, this is where it worries me a little bit as to how we approach this game. Because if we get one nil up, are we going to park the bus for the last 20 minutes? Do we want to be doing that, knowing that one goal for them kills us? I don't think we can. If we get two nil up, and then they score a goal. Are we going to still park the bus at 2-0? So I just think 
Liverpool was different proposition, and I and whilst I didn't like the second half, I agreed with the second half parking the bus because if we hadn't, and then they got back in it, everyone would have just said, "Why didn't we park the bus at two 0 So, but with Sevilla, I think the best approach with them is to be solid at the back, like we were in the first half, but just keep that first half mentality of when we get the ball, let's get it forward and let's get at them because. I think we can score three or four goals against Sevilla. Many teams have done it. But what we don't want to do is what we did against Liverpool, get one, two ahead and then sit back and invite them on because they're OK at that. And I think that is the only thing that concerns me tomorrow is the fact that we didn't get an away goal in Spain and they now have that advantage if they can do it. But they're toothless up front. And if United turn up like they did against Liverpool and in the second half against Palace, that's you know we've scored five goals in our last two games against decent Premier League opposition. Um, this is a, a pretty poor Sevilla side. They are getting turned over a lot in La Liga. We need to go. I, I think go and score three goals, and the time the tie will be over without any stress for the fans. But I, I'm going to go two one. I think it will be two one. Um, what is the status on Zlatan? Says Jorgen. Well, Zlatan is training. He's just not fit. Um, he, he's he is fit. He's not injured. He's just not at the level he wants to be. Which I think we've said before is effectively what we saw in November. He's back, recovered from the injury, but he's not back to the player he was before. Can he get back to that? It, it, it's it, it's one of those, isn't it? It really is. But we, we we shall see. We shall see what happens. But this is the this is big. This is big club football. This is where you want to be in March, April, May. You want to be at the business end of things. Now we can't be at the business end of the Premier League. It's gone. But it looks like you know we've got a really good chance of getting second place, which. You've got to ignore City in many ways. That they, they just absolutely obliterated everybody. But there was a, a time in the last few weeks even where we've been like, we're going to do well to get fourth. Liverpool and Spurs are going to come through and they're going to win it. We've got better goal difference. We've got more points than them. And if we can keep second place, I think that's a real positive from the season. Beyond a positive, I think it's a real big achievement. Um, only today I was looking at the fact that this time last season we had... I think we had 57 points after 30 games um, and we'd scored, we had a goal difference of 25. We've got eight more points and I think we've got 13 more goal difference. So, and we're in second place. So big, big improvement on last year, um, which, which shouldn't be ignored. Still in the FA Cup, quarterfinal and Champions League, which we weren't last year. We're in that bloody nightmare Europa League. So definite, definite improvement on United and definite improvement in the last couple of games and we beat Chelsea let's not forget we beat Chelsea quite recently so I'm more confident about this Sevilla game than I was because they are they're half decent but I, I just feel that maybe they shot their load in the first leg and and maybe that was Sevilla's chance to get 2-0 up and then try and sit back against us at Old Trafford and I think I hope Sevilla do sit back against us I, I really do because I think teams that have a go at Manchester United are the bigger threat at the moment you know we're at home at Old Trafford against Ch uh, against Liverpool at the weekend. We basically play a flat back four with two CDMs at Old Trafford. Now, Van Hal used to that, do that and he'd get a lot of stick. But we didn't give Mourinho a lot of stick for that because we knew that an attacking team, Liverpool, are better than us. And if we went gung-ho, they'd get at us and maybe we would have lost the game. So... I think, we, and also with the injuries that we got and the the form's been a bit up and down, I don't think anyone had a problem with that. If we do that against Sevilla and invite them onto us, we don't really want that to happen. I'd like us to, I'd like Sevilla to sort of sit back a bit and let's let's have a let's have a go at a team that sort of sits back against us a bit. But I am more confident about it. The reality is, as I said, if we lose this game, the Liverpool game to me and hopefully to you lot will mean nothing. We'll be out, and they'll still be in the they'll be in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. We'll be out, and um, you know, second place, second place is still second place. I want to. I said Champions League quarterfinals at the start of the season was our minimum. I think a lot of people said anything beyond the Champions League is a bonus. And I think when you look at the teams that are going to be in the Champions League quarterfinals, if we can get into the semi-finals, that's a real bonus for us. So we've got to get to the Champions League quarterfinals. We've basically got one game against Sevilla to do that. It's it's at Old Trafford. We've got to go and express ourselves. We've got to get the crowd up again like we did in the first half. And that front four, when we give them the ball, Rashford, Mata, Sanchez and Lukaku, when we get the ball to them, they're a threat. Second half against Liverpool, we didn't even try to do that. But but that that's what we need to do. That's the threat for Manchester United. And uh, I'm confident tomorrow. I am confident. I don't think... I think there will be aspects of it that are quite nervy. But I am confident. 
2-1. It's acceptable against the team that can make matches like the Bin Dippers. We need to put the sword to lesser teams, says Jay Coulter. So I'd agree with that. Um, Art Optic, I felt previous matches were just a build-up. Climax will be against Sevilla. We will win. I mean, we've got Brighton on Saturday, haven't we? Saturday evening, FA Cup quarter-final to get us into the semi-final. I'm not concerned about that. I think that game, you know, you never know, but I am... Very, very confident that we're going to beat Brighton. Even if he picks Fellaini, I, I think we win that. But Sevilla tomorrow, coming off that fantastic result against Liverpool, we get Sevilla done and I think we can you know, put our feet up a little bit against Brighton and just relax because these have been the two big games. We've got to win tomorrow. We've got, you know, I'll only speak about it now for a few seconds, but the scenario if we lose against Sevilla, imagine how we're going to feel. I think a season that's been... Definitely factually progressive and improvement. But if we lost against Sevilla tomorrow, it all comes crashing down. It's it's a big it would be a big, big loss for us to lose tomorrow. And, and that's what Mourinho's saying about it. it. It is big. So Martial's back in training. Pogba didn't train today. Doesn't necessarily mean he won't play tomorrow, but it's unlooking unlikely. Um in which case, as I said, I think if you've got no Pogba, just go with the two midfielders who are going to protect the back four and then get the ball to these lot to hurt Sevilla on the break. Um, I have put Fellaini in there, as I say. I don't, the only reason I put Fellaini in there is because I would put McTominay there and, or I would play Pogba if he's fit. But if he's not fit, I would put McTominay there. But the only reason I've gone with Fellaini is because Mourinho loves him and he wants him to sign a new contract and Fellaini will only sign a new contract if one, he gets the wages he wants and two, he's playing regular first team football. So Mourinho's got to give him that. But, he might not be 100% to play 90 minutes. And as John Sherrell said, maybe it's more likely he'll start against Brighton, which I think will, will please everybody. Because um, I want McTominay to play if Martial's not fit. Tony Martial to score the winner tomorrow, last seven minutes. Well, let's not forget. I mean, that was the next thing I was going to talk about. And uh, Snaps is on. Welcome to the moderators. I've seen George, Kyle, Matthew as well. So big shout out to the, to the mods today. Um, do drop us a like. We're trying to get 500 likes on the live show. So please do drop us a like. Sanchez mustn't give the ball away so much versus Sevilla, especially in our first our half or it could be a dangerous for us. I wanted him to come off last match. He has to cut the sloppy passes out. He's better than that, says Lynn Hall, which I think is a fair comment. Um, Sanchez to have a big game tomorrow, says Mr. Axe, 238. And he's got he, Sanchez at number 10 and Matter at right wing or vice versa, says Marco. We've not seen Sanchez on the right wing yet. He is playing more centrally. We've never really seen Matter as a number 10, even though many of us would like to see him there. Um, let them interchange a bit. But what I was going to come back to is let's consider the bench tomorrow. Because I looked at the bench the last two games and we had Lingard on there. But we had... What did we have at the weekend? We had Darmian, Shaw, Lindelof, Carrick, Fellaini, Lingard. You've got basically three defenders in Lindelof, Shaw and Darmian. Two slow midfielders in Carrick and Fellaini. And Lindelof as your only flair option. The great thing about tomorrow is Martial should be back. Which means on the bench you've got Lingard and Martial. And suddenly that bench has got more flair from it. So if we are struggling at any point, you can bring Lingard on. You can bring Martial on and it, it just gives us something. And we need, you know, when we've got Pogba back, that bench becomes even stronger again because maybe, you know, maybe Mata drops to the bench or, or, or McTominay drops to the bench. But yeah, we, we need to get everybody back fit. But having Martial back part of the squad tomorrow is really important, especially uh, bench options if we need them. Um, Emmanuel, T Emmanuel Tita says, Mark, be optimistic. This match will be 3-0. I'm going to go 2-1 because I'm going to be conservative. But I do agree that we can we can turn this around. And we can we, we can certainly... We could go and win this 2-3-4-0. Uh, Sevilla are definitely there for the taking. Um, and Sevilla are awful in front of goal. And let's not forget, we've got David De Gea in goal as well. But So they've, not only have they got to create the chances, they've then got to beat De Gea, which they couldn't do at their place. They're a half-decent team, Sevilla. But they, they, they're rubbish at scoring goals. So I, I'm confident we're going to win. We're going to win. Um, official Abaduni says, I love the United stand. Uh, cheers, pal. Um, Ibra's also back in training, says Ghost Watt. Um, I think he's been training anyway. I don't think Sancho, I don't think uh, Zlatan's not been training. He has been training. And also, if you can get him on the bench, that's, that, that would be a, a real positive to have. I want to see Zlatan playing some games before the end of the season. I mean, where do you all sit on Zlatan? Um my, I, I do agree with the people who say his lack of pace will hurt us because we are a team that likes to hit teams on the break and he's too slow for that. Um, but on the other hand, I also think there are going to be times between now and May 
where we're chasing a game in the last 20 minutes and you chuck Zlatan in the box. And, you know, as long as the team's sitting back against us, I think Zlatan's very, very important. And we will, we will have games this season where teams don't press us and they sit back. Um, so, yeah, I, I want, you know, again, if you've got Zlatan, Martial, Lingard on a bench, great. But Zlatan's not injured anyway. It's, it's all about his... Um, his levels that he's playing at and he's just not happy with it which is the sort of legend he is really he just he's come back from the injury but he's not the player he was before so i think it's all about conditioning and trying to get himself back so he could be back anytime um Duren says that uh, Sevilla just lost to Valencia 2-0 at home and Zlatan is still here says Andrew K and Zlatan is a legend of the game says George Kyle um yeah so we have got still got people joining us a little bit late so please do drop a like on the video and subscribe if you are new but the news around injuries are Martial trained for Manchester United today Pogba didn't there is a press conference from Jose Mourinho at two o'clock where he may reveal a little more but actually in this situation I don't think he will reveal anything more because why say Pogba's fit he might do it but I would if he if he thinks Pogba's fit I'd still keep it quiet because this game is bigger than Liverpool on paper. He said it on Friday. This game is more important because if you lose to Liverpool, you've still got opportunities in the league to get back at it. If you lose to Sevilla tomorrow night, we're out. So he's got to take this more seriously. So I think I expect him to be a little bit cagey when it comes to uh, Paul Pogba. Um, Zlatan would bring leadership and passion if he was to get a few games, says Yassin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, says Ian Byrne. Good afternoon, Ian. I'd rather see a half-fit Zlatan as plan B than a donkey like Fellaini, says Jonathan Ball. And if we can get Zlatan available on the bench, Mourinho will surely be happier to give Lukaku a break, which will stand us in good stead for the run-in to Solomon Teague. Um, and we will bounce Sevilla if we use Rashford like we did, says Mr. Exclusive. Yeah, And having Martial back is obviously good. Um, around the 70th minute, I see, I agree with Andrew Gutierrez. You know, I want to see that Rashford-Martial dynamic again on the left. I just don't want to see Alexis Sanchez playing on the left anymore. It, it, it destroyed us. It destroyed Pogba. It ruined Martial. It, it stopped Rashford playing games. Get Sanchez at number 10 or on the right and leave the left-hand side to Pogba in the midfield and Martial and Rashford to the wing and let Martial and Rashford share that role. If one's tired, bring on the other for 20 minutes. If, if one's out of form, play the other one, have the other one on the bench. Works really well at the start of the season. Let's get back to that because it was, it was a breath of fresh air seeing Rashford do that. And... Um, you know what, Rashford's now got an iconic goal against Liverpool, just like Martial. So, you know, we, we can have two of the best young players in, in world football if we get them cooking. And, uh, and there's no reason why we can't. Um, still no Herrera in training, says Lynn Hall. No, I think this is, this is, Herrera's looking a little bit more long-term, isn't he? Which is a bit of a shame, but no, not back yet. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. We are live again at 8 o'clock tonight. Don't be watching City Stoke. They've already won the league and it's Stoke. It's a Skype show on the United Stand tonight at 8 o'clock, so you can call in. Skype Goldbridge, all one word. We'll be taking your calls. We'll, uh, we'll obviously discuss what Mourinho said in his press conference at 2, but I'm not expecting any big things. So things I want to talk about tonight. Sanchez probably is a good topic. Pogba, do we miss him? Um, well, you know, I'm sure Mourinho is going to feature. Is he, is he turning you around? Is he turning you around? Because I know a lot of people are and were a bit fed up with him. Um, hit the like button on your way out, please. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, bottom right-hand corner. Um, you're very welcome if you're new to the United Stand. And I shall speak to you all at 8 o'clock tonight. But 2-1's the score. And I shall leave you um, just for a minute or so. Let's leave it. I will leave you with, uh, this is my predicted lineup, not my lineup. This is my predicted lineup for the game. Um, so thanks everybody for watching. Um, this is how I think we're going to line up. Uh, give us your thoughts. Give us your score predictions below. If you're not watching live, score predictions. You can do your predicted lineup if you want. Actually, uh, we did that a couple of weeks ago. That's what I predict the lineup would be. It's not what my lineup would be. I'd put McTominay where Fellaini is. But other than that, I'd be happy with that team. Speak to you at eight o'clock. Thanks for dropping a like, and I'll see you all soon.